Welcome to another Dragon's Dogma 2 guide everyone. In this video I'm going to be talking about what the Maester skills are, what you need to do to unlock each of them, and I'm also going to provide some insight on why you may be having trouble getting them to drop. So why are the Maester skills something you should go for? Well aside from the achievement to collect all 12 of them, the Maester skills are typically very strong abilities. Think of them as kind of the ultimate ability of each class. They're proof that you've mastered that vocation, and if you have one of them, it means you've impressed your vocation's teacher enough and they've rewarded you with their powerful skill. Each vocation has an associated NPC, from which you can get the drop, except for Thief and Sorcerer, which both have two NPCs. The mechanic behind these tomes, which are what give you the skills, isn't that obvious, and it can lead to a lot of frustration. I think the way a lot of us assumed it worked is that if you complete the quest from one of these teachers, you're pretty much guaranteed to get the skill at the end of it. It makes perfect sense for them to be quest rewards, and there's plenty of evidence of people getting the skill as soon as the quest is over. And that is true for a lot of the quests that I've done. But for a lot of people out there, they're just not getting the drops, and they're wondering if they did something wrong, or if the game is just broken. As it turns out, a large portion of these maester skills are tied to the teacher's affinity. Affinity is how much an NPC likes you, and you know, how tight your relationship is. It's only briefly explained in a single pop-up, but it doesn't even mention the maester skills. It just says that you can gift items to NPCs, and I thought this was some kind of throwaway mechanic that at best maybe got you some extra materials or gold. But no, it's actually pretty important. So for any of these quests that you do, if you don't end up getting the tome to drop at the end of it, it probably means that your affinity with that NPC is too low. Why is it too low when you were just following the quest as normal? On this I genuinely have no idea. But there are two ways to fix this. The first is many of the NPCs that you do these quests for also have a post-quest escort mission that when completed raises their affinity. So for example, Trisha and Aini both have an escort mission that unlocks after you finish Spellbound. So does Baron, so does Talison, and so on. In some cases the tome will drop as soon as you complete the escort mission and sometimes you'll have to return to speak to them after the mission is over and then you'll get the drop. But I'm unable to tell you the exact point in time at which you might get it. The second way to fix these not dropping is by giving gifts. If you check your NPC logbook, you'll see that every person you meet has things they like, be it interesting items, beautiful items, expensive items, etc. This acts as your rough guide for what to give to each NPC. So if you don't want to go through with the escort mission, or if you do go through with it and you still don't get the tome, giving gifts is your alternative fix. And the way it works is that each NPC's affinity will only increase from the first gift you give them per day. So if you want to raise their affinity more than once, you have to give them a gift, use a bench to doze off for a full day, and then you can give them another one. What you're trying to do is raise their affinity until the point at which they reward you with that maester skill. After giving them a gift, you want to hang out in front of them for about 10 seconds, try and face them, make sure you're close to them. What you're trying to see is if they'll initiate a conversation, and if that happens, it probably means they're going to gift you something. If you've waited and then tried to talk to them and nothing works, it probably means they require more gifts, or gifts with a bigger point boost. Because not all gifts are created equal. For example, Copper Ore, or a Creature's Horn, might only give 2-3 to three points, whereas a Worm's Life Crystal or a Jasper is going to give 50. Naturally, the more rare an item, the bigger the point boost. As far as I know, almost every item gives some sort of point value, you just gotta figure out what makes sense for each person. And you'll know if an NPC likes something if they have a very positive reaction to it. If the NPC you're trying to give gifts to is in the middle of a questline, you might have to progress or complete that questline before you can give them gifts or get the tome as a reward. This happened to me with Leonard, but it's probably because he's involved in several questlines throughout the game. Most of the NPCs have their own questlines separate from the main story, so you don't really gotta worry about this too often. Now I'm not gonna pretend that doing the escort missions and giving gifts is 100% guaranteed to fix your problem. Dragon's Dogma 2 is a complicated, messy game at times, and it's certainly possible that either due to your actions or events that took place in your world, the game just bugged out. There's just so many variables that it can be really hard to tell sometimes, but hopefully this video can at least help. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's go over where each maester skill drops from. We'll go down the list of vocations like it appears in the menu. Also, if you need any help unlocking a specific vocation, check out my playlist or guides in the description. I have a video for how to get every single class. 
So up first is Fighter, and its tome is called Soldier's Code, which unlocks the maester skill called Riotous Fury. The first opportunity you have to get this is from Lenart after completing the Redovan of Calamity quest. This is the questline where you need to defend Melv from the dragon, and then Ulrika leaves Melv and you find her in Herve and you tell Lenart about it. You can start this one after completing the quest Seat of Sovereign, which is where you arrive at Vernworth and meet Captain Brandt. Once Redovan of Calamity is complete, if Lenart does not give you the Soldier's Code Tome along with the ring, you should then proceed with gifting him items. One of the easiest things to gift him is the Goblin Horns, because they are pretty common, but they're only going to boost his affinity by something like 2 points, so you can probably find something that works better. Now if you're late in the story and you've already triggered the quest Home is Where the Hearth Is, you won't be able to get the tome until after you've completed that quest. Despite gifting him the Goblin Horns in the middle of the quest, he only gave it to me after it was over. Depending on where you are in the story, Leonard can be found at the entrance to Melv, in Ulrika's house in Melv, inside his own house in Melv, behind the inn in Melv, like on the lower part of the cliff, and on the beach in Herve. Next up is Archer, and the tome for it is called Hunter's Secret, which gives the skill Heavenly Shot. This one is earned from Taliesin in Sacred Arbor, only after you've completed Glindwer's quest chain consisting of the quest Gift of the Bow and A Trial of Archery. You can start this quest by speaking to Glindwer in front of Roderick Smithy in Vernworth. I have quest guides for several of the quest lines I'm going to mention in this video, and I'll leave them linked in the description if you need them. Once you complete A Trial of Archery, you'll have to go visit Taliesin back at the Sacred Arbor where you first met him to get the tome. And once again, if he doesn't give it to you, you can always do his escort quest and or gift him things. For the mage vocation, the tome is called Enchanter's Almanac, and it gives you the knowledge of the Celestial Peon skill. You'll get the tome from Trisha's grandmother, Aini, after completing the Spellbound quest. To begin the quest, talk to Trisha at Aini's home, either once both of her grandparents have left the house, or you've carried them outside. Next up is the Thief vocation. There's actually two tomes you can get for the Thief. The first one is called Pilferer's Handbook, which unlocks the skill Formless Faint and the other one is called Legend's Opus, which unlocks the skill Blades of the Pyre. Both tomes are given by NPCs who you'll meet during the Nameless Village quest, which is unlocked from Captain Brant after completing the quest Monster Culling. Pilferer's Handbook is given by Srail once you hop down into the hole next to the Old Manor and run the parkour course, and Legend's Opus is given by Flod, who can be found within the Old Noble Manor. Then we have Warrior and its tome called Champion's Fable. This lets you master the skill called Arc of Might. This one is going to come from Baron, do the quest Claw Them Into Shape, and Baron's Final Lesson. You can start this two-part quest chain by visiting Baron's tent at nighttime. Like Thief, the Sorcerer Vocation also has two tomes. The first is called Conjurer's Jotting, and it unlocks the Meteoron skill. This comes from Trisha after completing the Spellbound quest, which I already covered how to start that during the mage section of this video. The second is called Murden's Chronicle, and it unlocks the Maelstrom skill, and it's given to you by Murden at the end of Sorcerer's Apprentice quest. You can start it by visiting Murden in the Checkpoint Rest Town, while wearing the full courtly attire. For Mystic Spearhand, you're looking for the Paladin's Enigmata Tome. This grants you the Maester skill Wild Fury. To get this one, you'll need to make your way to Dragon's Breath Tower and defeat the dragon there. Normally, Zegard will meet you here and help you fight the dragon. After defeating it, Zegard will grant you the tome. But if he never shows up, once you've killed the dragon, you can find him in the coastal hut in Herve. Then we have Magic Archer. The tome for its maester skill is called Spellbow's Paradox, and this helps you learn the skill Martyr's Bolt. This is given to you by Cleodna after completing the quest Put a Spring in Thy Step. The quest is started as soon as you make your way through Drabnir's Grotto and run into the old man named Gaustoffer in the middle of the road. Our next skill is for Trickster, and the tome for it is called Theurgist Rite. Using it will let you equip the skill Dragon's Delusion. It is given to you by Luz who is found at the Reverent Shrine. Speaking to her in ghostly form gives you the trickster vocation, but if you use the ladder on the left side of the shrine to climb to the roof, you'll find the real Luz up here and speaking to her rewards you with the tome. You can actually visit this place as soon as you get to Batal, although you will end up going here naturally during the quest Flickering Flame. And last but not least we have Warfarer. The tome for this one is Grandmaster's Path, and it grants the rearmament skill. You'll get this one from Lamond by completing his quest The Sodded Sage. 
He can be found in the volcanic island camp sitting next to the hot spring, and you can start the quest by just walking up and talking to him. So there you go, that is how to get all 12 Maester skills in Dragon's Dogma 2. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for a guide on how to get all of the pawn specializations. I'm almost done with that video and when I do complete it, it will be linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, this took a pretty long time to make so I would really appreciate if you could leave a thumbs up on the video and I'll be making more guides on Dragon's Dogma 2 soon.